We're gonna put the CPU away for this video and talk about this package I got. It's a very powerful mini class D amplifier, and we'll talk about what all that means later, but for now, let's just take a look. Because first, we just have to admire this product. The design and the finish of this amp is just absolutely breathtaking. Everything is made from this very slick brushed metal finish, now, for those of you who are wondering, blue is actually the only color it comes in, and I was kind of hoping for a black or even a gray color, but the blue is still absolutely gorgeous. Also, when they say mini amplifier, they really mean it, because this thing is tiny. And I was thoroughly surprised, especially when I found out how loud this thing gets. Now, on the front, we have the brand name, which includes the IC number they use to drive the amplifier, as well as a power switch and a volume knob. Now, the knob has a huge degree of rotation, which is awesome because it lets you really dial in your volume. Now, there's also a power indication LED. It glows when power is plugged in and then lights up when the amp is on. Now, you can see that the whole contraption fits into the palm of my hand, which is just amazing. Now, on the back, we have the left and right inputs and the corresponding left and right outputs. I appreciate how everything is properly labeled so you don't even really have to know electronics to even set this thing up. Of course, this doesn't really affect me or probably even most of my subscribers, but it is a nice touch. Now, for the inputs, I understand why they use RCA for the inputs because they are kind of a standard, but due to the size of this amp, I could see a lot of people trying to put this on their desk for use with desktop speakers. In fact, on their Amazon page, they say good for bookshelf and desktop speakers. Well, a lot of those people want to connect their phone or their computer, in which case, they need an aux cable. Now, I simply made my own aux to RCA cable, as I'll show you, but this I feel like is an unnecessary step, as there could have just been an aux jack as a secondary option from the beginning. If you plan on using this for some large home theater speakers or for outdoor speakers, this is a great option. It is certainly loud enough and it looks good so you can place it anywhere. Plus, for those situations, the connectors on the back would actually work out perfectly. I already said how you use an RCA cable for the inputs, but for the outputs you use this screw system. You unscrew the metal insulated cap, wrap the wire around the metal, and then re-screw the cap on. Now this is a pretty common system and it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just weird because you don't usually see it on devices this small. Lastly we have the DC power jack, now they include a power supply that I want to talk about later because it's a really strange choice. So I'm going to test the speaker out, first I need to create an aux to stereo RCA cable to plug into this amp, and in case anyone is interested in buying this amp, I'll show you how to do this. Just take an existing aux cable and strip the ends, and you should get three wires, a ground and then a left and right audio channel. Then take an RCA cable and strip the ends, you should get two wires, positive and negative. Now for me the right wire is negative and it's denoted by this white line, and you're going to need two RCA cables by the way, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. Also, you'll need a soldering iron, and I suppose you could use alligator clips, but solder is just a lot more permanent of a system. So tin all three wires coming from the aux cable with some solder. Then take the RCA cable and put some heat shrink tubing on it. Now solder the positive of the RCA cable to either one of the inner insulated wires from the aux cable. Now shrink the heat shrink tubing. Then add some heat shrink tubing to the ground of the RCA. Now solder it to the ground of the aux cable, which is the non-insulated wire. And don't shrink the tubing yet because we still have the other ground wire. Now get your second RCA cable, solder the ground to common ground of the aux that is already soldered to one RCA cable, then solder the positive to the only wire left and do the whole heat shrink tubing business. That means you should have three groupings, one of three wires which is ground, one of two wires which is the left channel, and the last one of also two wires which is the right channel. If you did everything right, you should have created an aux to stereo RCA cable converter. Now, I just wrapped the delicate part in electrical tape to add some sturdiness. With that built, we can connect our speaker. So our speaker should have two wires coming from it, positive and negative. Unscrew the nut from the correct audio channel and strip the ends of your speaker wire, then simply wrap the wire so that the metal makes contact. Then screw the cap back on until it's tight and your wire should be secure. Connect positive to positive and of course negative to negative. Now, if we plug in power and plug in our phone, we should be able to hear something. My mic doesn't really do the amp justice, but you guys can have a listen. It's what I was playing in the beginning. In fact, the entire background music of this video has been completely recorded by the output that's coming out of this amp, just to give you guys a little test for the quality.
Now, it's worth noting that the speaker never turns off when you flip the switch, merely it mutes the chip. This is good because now when you turn the mic on, there is no pop sound. Also, you guys can tell that the potentiometer or volume knob gives a huge range to this volume, which is really great. Now, the sound quality is great and there's no EQ, which means that the sound that's coming straight out of your phone is going to be the sound that's coming straight to the speakers, no mixing or matching. Now, not everything is just as good with this amp though. For starters, the power supply was definitely an accident or some kind of budget cut or warehouse deal. It's complete overkill for starters. 120 watts for a device this small has got to be near dangerous. I mean, in the data sheet of the chip, it says at their chosen voltage level, they can power two 15 watt speakers. That means 30 watts. Why would you need a 120 watt supply for an output of 30 watts when this chip runs at over 90% efficiency? Also, worse than that, the power jack doesn't even fit in all the way, it sticks out. One, this is a standard jack, and two, this is the included power supply. Why in the world doesn't it fit properly? I promptly replaced mine with another power supply I had laying around. Mine is a 24 watt supply, which is fine because my speakers cannot total more than 15 watts. Also, it is about one fourth the size and the jack fits properly, so win win. At least now I have a 120 watt AC to DC power supply, which should be nice for some sort of project down the road. Overall, I thought this amp was a great buy, especially for the size, and I could see it fitting into a lot of different people's homes and different setups. I wish it was a little more versatile with the addition of an aux port and came with a power supply that actually fit the device, but overall when I think about it, neither of these things actually detract severely from the product, they are merely additions or features I would have liked to have seen or been added. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohideen and I will catch you guys later.